good tip is to go from above and get lots of light. <laughs> to you, the bold and foolish lambs, to you who are Intoxicated with riddles, let's go. Who take pleasure in twilight? Souls are lured by noise. Because Carly and I were just sort of like quite enamored when we were watching uh, this particular. Do not this particular steal, documentary because it was like John powers, Waters talking over and some some phone conversations with Andy Warhol, all talking about these like infamous and tip prints. Um, and I, I guess maybe as a woman, as a young woman, there was a sense of wanting to sort of not just reclaim your body, but you know. It, it, it's it's used in so many ways by other people and it's quite exciting to sort of figure out how you know how how you might want to manipulate or engage engage with your own body and that was I think that was just quite a, a fun thing for the, us to do the way it was shot the the vantage point um, was quite difficult in the in the um, I guess if you're if you're thinking about sort of feminist theory and, and Laura Mulvey's work about narrative cinema and mm -hmm. um, you know the the to be looked atness of uh, women and the male gaze and all that was, was that deliberate? I don't think there was like I mean when I I like framed that up I I I think I was just conscious that I didn't want there to be any kind of um, uh, I wanted it to be quite strongly focused on what the film was about and I guess uh, quite unflinchingly um, which was a conscious thing I don't know I can't really think in relation to Laura Mulvey what the what I guess I guess what the relation is but um but yeah, I, it was, I guess it was very conscious. Yeah, and actually, it, 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 it going back onto YouTube, or well, actually, it's not allowed. It wasn't at that point allowed on YouTube. But going back into that um, kind of like video meme sphere, it was quite conscious. It was actually something that I'd done with a lot of previous films that did not have tits in um, in my work, which was to have this very tight crop that's often used on um, specifically foot fetish films. Um, online and lots of kind of like um, I guess non-genital uh, sort of fetishes so like the, AM, the AMSR videos are all very tight cropped on the face and the foot fetish ones are always a very particularly tight crop on the I, I, I guess it's that sense of like almost like disembodiment and then like fracturing the body so that you're kind of like maybe made to feel slightly uncomfortable even though it might be a quite a sexually charged piece. But do you worry then that you're um, perpetuating this like traditional exhibitionist role of the woman to, to be not only looked at but displayed and then um, sort of coded for the strongest visual and erotic impact? Yes, completely. That video had, um, I think, 30,000 views in the first weekend it was put online and that's not because people are interested in art um, so it, it's definitely a massive part of I think any any woman especially now uh, using her body because you, you know it's the constant question am I just contributing to a bank of images that are just constantly growing and constantly do not feel potentially disembodying like cowards, all of us um, you can guess but I don't think it's a reason to stop and is, the, is that well is that why though that you're, you're focusing more on paintings as you said at the beginning Jake you're moving away from that sort of work 
Well, it's interesting actually because the paintings are they're very much part of the um, have, have led on from the, the films that I was making at the beginning. Of, I guess when I started showing my work and stuff, and um, and I use my body in them. You know, they're 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 made on the floor, and I kind of. In, in, in various ways end up crawling across the canvas even if I'm using brushes they are very um, my whole body is very much engaged so actually maybe it's it's felt like a way of leaving a trace and using using my body in a, in a less graphic but maybe more effective way um, especially especially in relation to, I guess, maybe a previous generation of artists of, you know, whom's work I really love, so like Jenny Natsley, who kind of, the, the, the active body was very much almost part of the end work, was perhaps trying to, trying to do something similar, but actually remove the body completely from the actual final image that you see or final thing that you experience. Can we, um, following on from that, talk about the, the use of the word cunt in your work? Uh, cunt is the first, the first text piece really I've, I've done, and the first word I've worked with, and I was sort of drawn to it on a lot of levels. I, it seemed like the most seductive word to potentially use and the most effective. Um, it's, I started thinking about it as being potentially the only anarchic word left because it's, it is banned from a lot of our, a lot of our print media and online media. And, and it's still very much something, a word that is that is potentially contentious and uh, but like much loved and I, I kind of like I was interested in, in, in its use as this sort of like reclaimed word for feminists some feminists uh, but then also something that gets you know banded around an inanimate objects and is mu very much part of like I don't know car abuse culture and like you know just the, 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 it can be word, a word that's full of so much pleasure. You know, it's one of the first, I guess, swear words I probably knew and really enjoyed. My mum definitely used it a lot. Um, yeah, that's, that, 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 that was like, I, I, I kind of like, I liked, I, I, I liked that it has the same, has the same effect and meaning, whether it's a politicised, if there's a politicised sort of like um, energy behind it or whether you're literally just screaming it at someone. It, um, it also, it, it means massively different things in the US than really? it does in the UK. Yeah, it's not, um, in the US if you say it, it's literally the worst thing you could possibly say. And when I came to England, it, I was shocked by how many people would just say it. Yeah. And also, I don't know if it's like if it, if it's different with with different groups of people. Like my parents are both very very Cockney, and I and I sometimes have to catch myself. So I realise that when when they use it, it sounds completely different to how maybe it does when I use it. Um, and actually, I was speaking to an artist who grew up in Qatar. And I think it's it's a very similar word. It might even it, I think it looks like canto, but um, she was telling me that when it's used, she, she came to my studio once. She was like, "I swear that your agro art," and, and I was uh, trying to explain the same thing to her. And she was saying that it's it's like if if any word has a spell in it, that's the word. She said, 